This is data acquisition with LabVIEW and the DAC MXVIs. It will show high speed looping and display as well as data storage. We'll get into programming this in just a moment, but first let me show you our hardware setup. Today we're using the NIUSB 6211. This technique will work with most of National Instruments data acquisition devices that have analog input on it. Here we're going to be reading in analog input channel 0, and we've also got a pin here that we can connect with this test lead that will give us 5 volts that we can measure on that channel as well. So let's get into LabVIEW and set up a real simple user interface. Put down a waveform chart, and then I'll hold down the control key while I'm dragging it, and I'll create a copy of it and that's our user interface. Let's go back to the diagram and program our application. So we've got a lot set up over here, but we're going to be using a lot of these VIs. So the first thing that we'll do is get a create virtual channel. We'll set it up over here and I want to tell it two things. First of all, what channels that it'll want to read from. So we'll create a constant, we'll choose channel 0, and remember that channel 0 is where this test lead is connected on the 6211 right there. So we'll choose that and also tell it what input terminal configuration I want to use and we'll tell it reference single-ended. Second thing we'll do is set up the timing. So here's the timing VI and what we're going to do is tell it three things. One is the rate, so we'll create a constant. The next one is the sample mode. Create a constant for that and we'll tell it continuous. And then finally we'll create a constant and tell it how many samples per channel and it's going to use that to allocate the buffer. The next thing that we'll do is actually start the acquisition and then we're going to come down and get the read property node. So I'll bring this up, we'll set it over here a little bit, we'll wire it in and the read property node is going to let us start selecting where in the buffer we want to read from. So we can say relative to and an offset. So I'll click right on relative to and I'll create a constant here and we want it to read relative to the most recent sample. So the most recent sample we acquired in is the point that we'll start reading from. And then we'll set an offset in here. So we'll create another constant and we'll tell it to go back into the buffer minus 1,000 points. Now because those are already sitting in the buffer, that minus 1,000 points, it won't take any time to read this. There won't be any delay. It'll just go read this immediately. All right, so then we're actually going to perform the read itself. So let me expand our display out a little bit, our diagram so you can see it better and we're going to put down the actual read function right now. So here's the read. This will auto wire. If we get it close enough. And then I need to tell it to go out, do analog input on a single channel, but I want multiple samples and give it back in waveform format. And then we'll tell it how many samples we want out of there. So I'll create a constant and tell it 1,000 points. And then we're going to put this up on our waveform graph by wiring the data over. And then finally, when it's all finished, take this stop VI, we'll drop it down and that'll stop it. Since I want this to happen over and over again, we're going to put it in a loop. So let's take our loop structure and put it around there, tell it to create a control, and let's go back to the front panel now and run this and see it operate. So we'll click on the run button here. We got a lot of 60 cycle noise in here and if I touch this, this is connected up, I can disturb this just a little bit. If I connect this over to the 5 volt input, you'll see that we get the 5 volts coming in there and I can take it off and we have our input. So that's all running fine. Another thing I'd like to do is show you how fast this loop is running. Let's go back to the diagram again. And I'm going to create an indicator off of this loop counter. I'm going to go back and run it one more time and you can watch this iterate down here. So it's running pretty fast. It's showing us the data. We're seeing it in real time. But this loop is already up to 50,000 iterations, so it's, it's updated this display 80,000 times now. And that means that that loop in the background is running pretty fast as well as showing us the data. 